Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about a series wound motor. What I have here is a motor out of an electric golf cart, probably from, oh, the 60s. But this motor inside, it's it checks out to where it's like new. So this is a very good motor. And I'm trying to figure out something to do with it. Anyways, it is a GE motor, General Electric. It's a 36 volt. Um, it doesn't have any horsepower or anything stamped on the tag. But, I wanted to talk about it since it's called a series wound motor. Now, I was lost on this motor for a little while. Not too sure on how to wire it up because it has four connections. Now, this motor's got one here and three on this side. Well, the four connections are one for the armature or the brushes and the other two are for the field coil. Now, which one's which here is on this particular motor. These two are the field coil. So in a permanent magnet motor, so a motor that has magnets inside of it, the magnets create the magnetic field inside of it. Well, with a motor like this, the field coils are just a big electric magnet. They create that magnetic field inside the motor like you know the magnets would on a permanent magnet motor now the other two connections these two here these are for the brushes these go through the armature and that's the part that spins now that part's a big electric magnet too now wiring one of these motors up since it's a series wound motor well all four connections they're connected in series so the way i have it here is i have a connection on the armature then it coming out of the armature into the field coil and then out of the field coil now you could do that in any manner whether it's going into the field coil and out and through the armature it really does not matter as long as the two coils are in series now, one thing I must say about a series wound motor. I did not know anything about this, and I just happened to stumble across it. Now, with a series wound motor, you never, ever, and let me stress that, never run one at full power. So, in other words, with this motor running it at 36 volts with no load on it. And let me just stress that more than anything. There's a lot of traffic today. Anyways, let me just stress that. And you're like, well, why? Well, a series wound motor with a whole bunch of math having to do with voltages and magnetic fields and RPMs and I don't know, it's, it's over my head. But basically, the basics of it is on, at full power with no load, this motor will spin at such a high RPM that it will literally throw the windings out of this motor. It will destroy itself on the inside. So don't ever run one at full power with no load on it. Now, this is a 36 volt motor. I have a little old 12 volt battery here. So I am running it at a third of its power. So that's no big deal. It's gonna spin so slow, it won't pick up enough RPMs to do such a thing. But at 36 volts, this thing would probably eat itself. So, anyways, I have it all wired up. Everything in series. Um, connections like these, you could run a metal bar across here or something. I had a wire that I jumped it with. So, let's hook it up and see how it runs. Come on. There it is. That's running at 12 volts. It's fairly slow. And it's actually a really smooth running motor. Now, when it comes to reversing one of these motors, now most DC motors, to reverse them, you just switch your positive and negative and it reverses. Well, these motors, it doesn't work like that. All right, let's kind of pay attention. Let's get it running here again. Same way I had it. And me looking down at it, it is spinning counterclockwise. All right, now I just switched my cables. I'm going to hook them up again, looking down at it. 
it's still spinning counterclockwise. Now, to reverse one of these motors, on your connections, such as your field coil or your winding coil, you're gonna take two connections. So, in other words, I'm going to take, um, I'm gonna take this connection, and this connection. And I'm going to switch them. So basically I'm switching the polarity of the field coil. Now it doesn't matter, you can switch the armature or the field coil, as long as you switch one of the two. Tighten down. There we go. Now let's hook it up. Go on, I don't have. There it goes. Look at there. Now it's rota rotating clockwise because I switched the connections on the field coil. Now like I said, you could do that with the armature and it will reverse it. And that's how you reverse a DC series wound motor. Um, with this motor, I'm kind of kicking around the idea of a 36 volt electric go-kart maybe? I don't know. I'm still thinking about that one, but a, a go-kart or maybe even just taking something like a riding mower frame and making it electric powered. I think that would be kind of neat, but uh, I'll think up something to do with it. And when that time comes, I will start thinking about speed control on this motor. I am thinking about, I, I have some ideas on controlling this with pulse width modulation, but Maybe you can help me on this information. I'm not sure, would you feed the pulse width into the field coil, or would you feed that into the armature? I'm not too sure. I'll have to build an Arduino controlled speed controller with some pretty robust MOSFETs and stuff to run this. And if you have any suggestions on possibly some MOSFETs to do that, I'm wanting to run it at 36 volts and I don't know. I'm guessing on the amps. Let's see if the plate says anything about amps. Um, no, it does not. So I'm expecting maybe a couple hundred amps. I don't know, 200, 300. I'm not too sure on that. So if you have any suggestions on whether to feed the pulse width modulation sig into the field coil or the armature or either one, it doesn't matter. And maybe even some suggestions on some MOSFETs that I can run off of a Arduino to control that pulse width modulation. Well, I'm hoping that you found this useful. So if you ever come across a electric motor with four connections on it like this, whether it be out of a golf cart or who knows what, I don't know, some big electric heavy equipment had motors like this in them. But uh, I'm hoping you found this useful. Hope you found this some interesting information. Well, thank you for watching, and have a great day. See ya.